Okay, so we're going to close out hypersensitivity uh, with this lecture. Um, to, and we're going to look at type 3 hypersensitivity. Um, we've covered type 1 and type 2. Um, and this type of hypersensitivity is dependent on complement. And we've you remember about complement, it was one of the ways that you could get antibodies to bind IgM, for example, in IgG bind to, uh, to uh, bacterial cells and then initiate the complement process which uh, ended up um, with the, all the complement factors ended up with the MAC attack complex um, and the punching of holes basically into the bacteria. Well this can be initiated, uh, can be potentially initiated um, in wrong places and at the wrong time um, and, and it's the, the complement is really uh, results from uh, the really misappropriation of these formation of these complexes uh, when they bind to allergens in the blood and they and they um, this uh, causes them to be deposited in, in blood vessels and tissues uh, it leads to mast cell uh, uh, mast cell activation um, and remember if you remember back uh, if you looked at complement, the mechanism of complement, once you look back, you'll remember there was mast cell activation that occurred uh, when you released 3A and 5, uh, 5A, and so though uh, which would result in histamine release. And also, this also causes there to be neutrophils are uh, can be attracted into that site. So what happens in this case mechanistically is that you can have uh, bystander effects. For example, one one potential uh, effect is if you have a, a, a bacteria or immune complex um, that is under uh, complement attack, then remember that this is a, a complement is a cascade of events that occur and so uh, once you're starting to make all of these different complement factors and you potentially can you know make poles and and, and into the tissue into the bacteria or if it's a deposit that's on your tissues then what can happen is of course you're, you're sort of a cloud sort of a cloud of complement uh, factors remember it's a um, remember that's a there's turnover because they're enzymes and so you can get thousands and thousands of factors. Well those things can, if there's, if there's enough of them, you can get eventual binding, even superseding uh, silic acid, uh, to the tissues themselves and this can lead then to destruction of that tissue and of course um, the uh, um, attraction of neutrophils and activation of mast cells. So in many cases what you have is, and if this was for example uh, a deposit of some sort in which uh, of an allergen in, or blood that's blood uh, uh, bacteria that has that is deposited on your tissues then you can get what you can get the complement um, will attack also the tissue cells as well uh, there can be some attack of that and so you get this bystander effect and this this can cause uh, real uh, serious problems um, and a number of those uh, approach those t the types of those uh, sicknesses are, for example, serum sickness, in which uh, complement. Um, for example, you could have uh, uh, erythrocytes, uh, in which in which uh, the Rh in which you have antibody that's made binds to those Rh factors, Rh factors, and remember IgG is an activator complement, so you could get activated activation. Uh, of complement on those cells, and so you'll on the uh, on those erythrocytes, not just through ADCC killing those uh, those cells, but also complement, um, and there and so this can lead to destruction of, of uh, blood cells. There's a number of other things like uh, rheum, uh, rheumatic fever, uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, farmers and pigeons lung, which is uh, results from um, results from um, people who raise, for example, pigeons uh, and around their feces, their feces dries out very, and it become, it can be 
become a powderish uh, like a dust and that dust it can be very highly uh, allergenic and can be breathed in and cause an allergic response um, and that response uh, can be it gets into the tissue spaces and can result in into uh, an anaf a localized anaphylactic response in the lungs. The same can be done with farmers who are we grain and you get very fine pow you get very fine dust particulate matter that can be breathed in and then essentially causes a condition similar to um, uh, some respects it's similar to asthma but it's, it, it cannot it may not be that same mechanism. Uh, because what's happening is you get the deposition of those antigens into the lung spaces and all, and then if there's antibody binding, then you can get a complement activation. So this this bystander, the effect, uh, uh, the bad effect, uh, uh, type three is actually this bystander effect. Now, and this is a little bit better. You can sort of see here. Um, this is a little bit more understandable. So, so for example, if you have an antibody that's by an allergen, and remember they have regular repeats, uh, and so here is one, two, three, four, and of course they're bispecific. So, if this allergen contains the same epitope, several epitopes, they can cross-link the antibodies, and these can cross-link and form, um, can then initiate. Uh, if you have enough of these C1Q binding, and C1Q binding can then activate uh, uh, for uh, the C3B activation, and then uh, the further um, further activation of more complement factors in that area. And if that's in the space, like if this com this complexes would be huge, very really large complexes, and those things can deposit in the blood in the blood vessels. Or in the vessels, they can sort of they essentially kind of precipitate out, and when they do that, you're going to produce potentially a MAC complex from this, and you have damage to those tissues. There are ways of getting rid of this, and for example, erythrocytes um, have receptors like CR1, which can bind C3B, and it if it sees C3B in these on these complexes, it can bind it. This isn't drawing to scale. This is erythrocytes a lot bigger than these complexes and then they can be um, removed but uh, these immune complexes can be removed in the spleen and the liver uh, by macrophages who have uh, uh, who have also these C3B types of uh, receptors and can bind to them and they can be swept out of the swept out of the system so that's kind of nice because it it's a way of removing these deposits in the bloodstream um, so that's one way, but the big thing is I just want you to remember is that really this kind of complex where you've got complex eight, you've got C1Q binding to these FC regions, and then the activation of those complement factors in that area and getting bystander effects. Now, uh, as you can see here, this sort of takes you through as you have an allergen uh, that's been um, that's been given. Here's in red, uh, antibodies uh, can migrate out and cross-link uh, that allergen making a large antibody complex which then can uh, initiate C1Q you know bind to C1Q through the FC region and initiate uh, all the events we talked about five, C3A, C, uh, five, C5A, C4A which um, which uh, cause mast cell activation these are mast cells can solve mast cell activation uh, and migration of neutrophils uh, into that area and also in the, and thus uh, inflammation in that area and uh, potentially blood vessel occlusion which is not good uh, so and then uh, um, um, you can see here swelling in that area because uh, it's an inflammatory response and this can take about one to two hours to occur you can see that here uh, here's a, a case of serum sickness in which you have uh, the it's actually the erythrocytes uh, have been pooled because what happens is is your blood actually um, slows down when it gets into the feet and it, it slows down in terms of the circulation and that's where you can get deposit you can you get the higher probability of deposits in there and this can occur also with drugs in which a drug for drug were to bind 
uh, to the cell to the cell surface or bind to proteins and form form com uh, which initiated complexes of uh, IgG that would be would be eventually initiated. Then the, these deposits will also kind of precipitate out or deposit in the in these areas, you know, like when you're standing, uh, where you have blood pools, and so you get blood vessel wall. So you use things like uh, vasculitis um, in the blood vessels. You can have deposits in the kidneys, in the renal glomeruli, um, and this would be nephritis, uh, nephritis, sorry, nephritis, and then it can be in the joints, which can lead to arthritis. And so you get inflammatory response in those in those joints because you've got these deposits. Um, it can be in the perivascular area, which is referred to as arthritis reaction. And you can have it in the lungs in the alveoli uh, capillary interface, and this gives you farmer's lung. So you can see this. This happened to me. Uh, actually, uh, my feet weren't quite this bad, um, but they did. Um, this this uh, the, they resembled this, in which I had taken a drug. Actually, it was a sulfa drug. I'd taken it several times for as an antibiotic for um, um, for sinus infections that I got from my wonderful children when they were very young. Um, and I, I, I became allergic to sulfur drugs and I knew it because when I went, when I, when I took the, had taken the drug um, uh, before, uh, it must have been, it was several hours before bed and uh, all of a sudden I woke up, my feet are itching because that's one of the things with, uh, um, with uh, histamine. Uh, you, you're, it was itchy and I looked at my feet and they were just like this red they were red and had these kinds of um, look like that and you can see here here's here's a child you get also this blotches it doesn't the feet, this is a sort of extreme in the feet but you can also get the deposits uh, in the vasculature and you can see that's the case here uh, with uh, I believe that, you know with this baby who's uh, uh, who's gotten uh, um, who's had a reaction so what generally happens in type 3 sort of if you look at the type time course if we look at the levels um, of antibody in the system that you have if you have an intravenous injection bloodborne antigen then in um, this is the amount of the antigen and then this is the amount of the antibody that you know the antibody initially the antigen is quite high uh, antibody is quite low until you finally kick in the immune reaction, immune response, you start antibody starts to go up, IgG starts to go up, uh, antigen may start going down, and it's in this window um, of exposure in which there's some antigen right in here, in which there's, in which you still have enough antigen around, and you still have antibody. Now this may be antibody that's pr be produced. It may take the second or the third time where you produced enough antibody then are then are um, exposed to the to the uh, to the uh, allergen to get to get the conditions just right but once this occurs you've got you know similar amounts of antibody similar amounts of antigen then you can get complex formation in this window and that's where that and that's where uh, that can occur once these things are eliminated it, you go about your merry way um, and there's no antigen left and you have antibody that's there so that's kind of gives you a this is over time and this is a, the levels in the plasma kind of gives you a feel for that now so there's going to be a couple review questions uh, go ahead and answer them uh, you can stop the tape now uh, stop the I would just stop it and then answer these questions um, and then the next slide will be the answers okay now let's go on to type 4 hypersensitivity. Now this is referred to as delayed hypersensitivity and there's a reason for that because it takes longer uh, for this to occur and to, uh, uh, to initiate than it does for uh, type any of the others type 1, 2, or 3. Um, this is thought to be a response to harboring bacteria in the tissues or tissue spacious periphery to periphery. Uh, it, it occurs most commonly with topical agents uh, 
uh, that will react with the skin so things that will bind and react to the skin and for example contact dermatitis in which or things that will bind like cosmetics uh, poison ivy oak poison oak chemicals things like that development of uh, th1 sensitized cells uh, happens, which create a cytokines capable of activating and attracting macrophages in in, in there. Um, and so it's these, it's really the macrophages that are activated along with with these sensitized Th1 cells that's, that are the most important thing. So what happens is if you have an an, uh, an antigen, uh, and the antigen, for example, a lotion or something, uh, a cosmetic, uh, you add it, it reacts with the with the skin proteins, the proteins on the skin, in the skin or inside in, in the skin that are accessible to cells. And so Langerhan cells are antigen processing cells that are in the skin. And so these are connected, this is connected to the lymphatics. And so um, what happens is, is these APCs are going to go and uh, potentially um, will uh, bind to those, see those proteins, recognize that there's some, they're damaged and take them up and then the cells will then start to migrate they'll migrate into in uh, to the lymph nodes and then what they'll do is they're going to undergo essentially what they'll undergo is antigen processing uh, and th1 or, or in the case of th0 recruitment if it's if it hasn't been seen before and go through all the things that we've talked about before so this is cd4 cells um, and so uh, these are then activated and will um, and, and can then these cells can then of course divide into th1 cells uh, uh, more making more th1 cells uh, differentiate and, and proliferate and they also can make uh, memory cells and then those th1 cells after they've divided in, or they've started differentiate and proliferate um, are are then go go into uh, go migrate back into the skin and will interact with other antigen processing cells, Langerhan cells, that have also processed this antigen, um, uh, and will display this to these Th1 cells, which will initiate macrophage attraction because the cytokine there will be cytokines that are released by the Th1, which will uh, will then go along to initiate. Um, macrophage attraction into the into the skins and then that's when you, then you can get um, a uh, localized anaphylactic response in this case it, it'll be uh, the itch uh, you know that's where you, you get an itch uh, becomes itchy from um, poison oak or poison ivy uh, in any way there would be inflammatory response that's at that at that in that contact area so You've got the antigen, antigen processing cells. They they migrate into the lymph nodes. You got T1, Th1 selected. Th1s are selected. They once they do that, they proliferate. Th1 cells are going to go back in, uh, and then um, attract, uh, activate more AP, you know, activate APCs, the APCs, and then attract macroph uh, macrophages in. And here you can see an example of that. So this is poison ivy, a pretty extreme one, in which you get actually inflammation and uh, destruction of that tissue, of the uh, of the tissue in that area. And here's the here's the actual active species from um, a, a poison ivy. Uh, it's a pentadeca uh, catechol. And what you want to notice here is that it has a long lipophilic tail here so this is really basically a fatty acid and it's coupled to a molecule that has uh, what this catechol, catechol which has the two hydroxyl groups right next to it so this makes this molecule actually really really easy for it to bind to proteins non-specifically and to bind to macromolecules non-specifically so it's a pretty highly reactive uh, species and this is what you get with uh, poison ivy and it can also be um, not just contact but it can be if you if you've seen a, a poison ivy sort of like patch or whatever if you were to look closely you would see actually in the morning you'd see a haze over that and that's not some there's some um, is from moisture 
but also it's it, the there's a volatility to this and so you'll you'll see the um, the um, you'll the the, the catechol it can be uh, um, what's the word for it emulsified and or or made into such a way that or it's such a way that it can um, form sort of a little bit of a cloud over the over the plants which then can also react um, with skin or lungs or whatnot so that's uh, so that's the active species for um, a uh, poison ivy effect now um, let me go back one second so this is also um, major response that you see for uh, for example tuberculosis or leprosy is driven by this type 4 hypersensitivity reaction um, and it's, it's a it's a very similar reaction uh, and leads to destruction of those uh, of those tissues um, so it's the immune reaction that is the most powerful not the actual um, not the actual uh, organism, but it's the what's what the organism's contributing to. Now there are ba therapeutics based on type four hypersensitivity, um, and type four hypersensitivity is associated with several diseases and conditions such as tu tuberculosis, leprosy, leishmania, deep fungal infections, and we've seen this before. Type four is also associated with allergic reactions to contact uh, antigens like poison ivy and poison oak. You can test for type 4 hypersensitivity by um, with an allergen patch test kit. And um, again, this is you can you each one of the little pins or the little pins has some of the chemical on it, the potential allergen it's put on, and then you look to see where the welts are to assess um, where uh, to assess what is the actual allergen. There are a relatively high instance of false positives in which you get uh, allergic response to the pen with the chemical, but it turns out not to be uh, not to be the case. So there, it's not it's not 100%. Um, you can desensitize a person potentially um, with type four and potentially for other allergens as well by using oral. Um, by using extracts. In this case, what you do is there's an oral extract of the poison ivy leaf, and that's ingested uh, and increases the amount, of just increasing escalating doses. And what does this do? It per, it basically uh, uh, enhances the um, uh, in, in, treatment can start as per, uh, in prevention in that it it can enhance uh, the amount of um, soluble antibody and um, thus reduce uh, uh, to try to block that allergen. So for type 4 hypersensitivity if you had antibodies that bound to the antigen uh, that's bound to the to the skin cells um, that could block, that would block the interaction the ability to go undergo antigen processing. It may cause a little bit of a change to start with but it uh, would block basically blocks the interaction of the cells with uh, with the uh, with the allergen. I always love this adverse effect, which is puritidis ani, which is a burning sensation in the rectum. So is so you uh, which would be you know you go in for the therapy. So you might have this as a potential side effect for a nice week, which sounds just wonderful. Um, so here's uh, another set of review questions. Um, go ahead and take a look at these. These are um, they also draw on some of the things that you we've already learned uh, you've learned in the past. And here are the answers. Okay. So the next thing uh, is we're going to briefly look uh, we're going to look at how these hypersensitivity reactions induce drug immunopathologies we've seen some natural occurrence things that occur um, for just allergens you know allergens that are out there but when it comes to drugs and we've touched on that a bit let's let's put a better definition on that and so all type 4 hypersensitivity reactions can lead to 
uh, deleterious effects from drug or basically allergic action to a drug. It can, in practice, um, they can all lead to that. So for the first one is type 1, right? This is caused by allergic anaphylactic reaction due to the allergen complexation with reduced induced mast cells. So if we have a self protein that has a lots of this drug on here, then um, and it's they're reasonably close, this can then bind to the mast cell, the antibodies on the mast cell through the drug. I should put that here. The drug binds. And when it does, this is, um, if it does, it's going to activate those mast cells um, and result in the anaphylactic response. And so this is drug to self protein. So remember it has regular, it has the same antigen on its surface, uh, the same um, idiotype or the same antigen on the surface, in which this case it's a, it would be, you could think of this as a hapten 2, uh, where the drug binds to the antibody. In this case then, you're activating mast cells by this mechanism um, by through an IgE process uh, by in which you have IgE that binds to the drug. Type 2 uh, is based on if a drug remember we had RH factor now if a drug gets bound to red blood, red blood cell then you can have antigen processing cells um, antigen B cells and antigen processing cells uh, then would could potentially buy to the drug uh, and engulf, and engulf and take over that erythrocyte. Now if you have drugs that are several that are in place, places on the erythrocyte that are very regular that that are close enough you could also have complement initiation. For the purposes of this class when I talk about type 2 um, it has to do with this interaction where you have antibody uh, uh, produced uh, that's to the drug. In practice you can also have complement you can use complement to do the same thing um, and by remove by complement or ADCC. I just want to become plain about that because you don't really necessarily know whether it's type 1, type 2. You can tell it's type 4, whether it's type 1, 2, or 3. That can be hard to do. So, um, uh, so in this case, uh, once it's activated in your age, you can go. You've got a couple of mechanisms get, that can can work in the favor of um, causing destruction of these red blood cells. Type two also has to do with really with the destruction of the blood cells. So remember that. For type three, you can cause. You can, again, we talked about uh, these complement activation uh, by binding. Um, uh, uh, cross-linking a whole lot of different complexes and so in this case what you see here is <clears throat> you might have this large complex space in which you have in this case IgM uh, is bound cross-links with this uh, pollen which can cross-link a whole bunch of these polymarkles and, and thus make this a very large uh, complex and that can deposit in the vasculature and as a consequence lead to innocent bystander reactions in which where they um, um, which, which get killed um, um, but it also means you can it, it would also it also if you were thinking about this or do it if you if you sort of just take yourself out of society then you'd have a less chance of getting it um, I just want to point out this is also uh, complement could be involved in type 2 as well but for the purposes of this class things that take on red blood cells uh, are type 2 for type 3 uh, it's these complexes these immune complexes that come down so um, for example and so so if we had um, you know if we had CNQ here you've got this uh, got this coming down and then of course the antibody can uh, combine to that leading to lots of that antibody there in the activation of complement. Type 4 can cause t uh, tissues to be labeled um, and inducing cytotoxic T cell responses in which um, Langerhans cells undergo antigen processing and present to Th0, Th1 cells and also memory cells and then 
what happens is, is that cause these tissues to be labeled, you induce this response, and it causes inflam inflammatory spots at that site, wherever that site is. Um, okay, so that one, two, and three. So one relies on IgE, uh, two relies on I um, on IgG or cell-based pressure, cell-based approach. Um, and one, two, and then three relies on complement and deposition of complexes, and four relies on really a cytotoxic T cell or cytotoxic lymphocyte response um, that uh, is brought brought to bear. So you need to know. So kind of look at those type one, two, three, and four. And I kind of do look at those because. Uh, these will give you mechanistic a mechanistic rationale for why something could be allergic, uh, drug, particularly how a drug could be allergic. In practice, it's hard to dissociate between type two and type three, uh, and I think in practice you wouldn't. You, well, you 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 test it because type one and type four can be uh, can be treated. You could test that and get a reasonable idea about what might work. All right. And so just to stop here then, uh, we're going to end um, alert and take back, take us all the way back to our take a message to see if we actually hit on these points. One, allergic hypersensitivity reactions <clears throat> result from a non-desirable immune response. That is in fact true. Um, response may be to help us um, well, when we first arrived on the scene deal with all kinds of things that um, pathogens that would like to feast on us. Two, both CMI and AMI complement should be uh, are involved in allergic reactions, and we've seen where they fit in. And three, hypersensitive reactions are a major reason for drug-induced pathologies, which is one of the major side effects of a lot of drugs that can be life-threatening. Okay, so uh, we are done, um, and this is the last uh, online lecture, I believe, for the as far as I know, for the class.